is AI making the Jaws effect worse? Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Ocean Talks. As shark enthusiasts, I'm sure you've heard the term Jaws effect. Now that's a popular term, especially this year it's going to be popular because we're entering the 50th anniversary of Jaws. In case you don't know what the Jaws effect is, here's a quick rundown. Basically, it's a concept that the movie planted the idea that sharks intentionally attack humans when and every time they see a human that human shark encounters are always fatal and that sharks should be killed to prevent future attacks. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It's a real thing. If you think about how much of the public automatically thinks that the sight of a dorsal fin means that you're in imminent danger or that imminent death is on its way, then you've experienced the Jaws effect. So a lot of people scared of sharks simply because they watched the movie Jaws. And if you think about it, sharks make a really, really good antagonist. So it's only natural for uh, entertainment industry to use sharks in that light. In fact, I can't think of a single movie where the shark is actually the good guy. They, I mean, they have pointy teeth. They make really good antagonists. But the reality is it's just entertainment. Personally, I don't see a problem with using sharks as entertainment. Jaws is one of my favorite movies of all time, but it's just that it's entertainment. But after spending the last seven or so years observing sharks, both above the water and in the water, I've come to know that the true reputation of sharks is very different than what you see on the big screen. Very different than the Jaws effect would have you think. But there's something happening right now on YouTube and on social media that is making the Jaws effect and has the potential to make the Jaws effect much worse. There's an explosion of channels that are using AI generated content to create stories, to create images, and in some cases create videos under the guise of factual storytelling, but they're telling a complete fabrication. Basically, it goes like this. The channels use AI and AI created images to tell a story. And the story is usually a very graphic, very clickbaity kind of story that involves, well, it always involves a shark attack. It always involves somebody dying in a horrific manner. And it always involves some kind of fact looking kind of introduction, like it actually happened. Say it was a Navy file or something like that that can't be cited in the record. And so these are things that are happening right now and people are consuming this information and the Jaws effect, the, the, the fear of sharks is just growing and growing and growing. This trend of scary shark stories that are normally faceless channels is rapidly growing. Most of these channels uh, don't seem to have an actual authentic person running the channel behind it. Uh, it's like a farm of false information, false stories. And these stories tend to be in the style of uh, like a Mr. Ballin type of story where the stories are presented as factual stories, but don't have citations. And most of them are blatant lies. And the big losers here would be the sharks because the sentiment against sharks grows because there is so much of this content. In most cases, these channels or whomever is behind these AI generated channels will openly say they provide education by presenting so-called shark facts as stories. Let me show you an example. Here's the channel description. This channel talks about the true shark attack stories and survivors retelling their near death experiences. Great white sharks, tiger sharks, bull sharks, and more are some of the most dangerous animals in the world. This one has even hired an actor in the intro to read a script to make it look more authentic. Take a look at this. This channel in particular downloaded my footage and paired their scary stories to my footage as they've actually downloaded other people's footage as well. But I had a major issue because they used my footage and paired it with a completely fabricated story. 
Now, I submitted a copyright request, uh, takedown request to YouTube, and they actually denied it. And I couldn't believe that because um, it's completely fake. And it, it, it does, I don't know, know how this fell under the free use terms that YouTube has established. But they did leave it up there. My clips are still being used with these fake AI stories. As you can see, it's quite frustrating uh, to see my footage. It took hours to capture being used. And it's being used to hurt the reputation of sharks. Uh, that's where I draw the line. And that's where I want to educate people about these channels to look for the red flags because th this is simply entertainment. Again, you can read the stories, but make sure you understand that these AI channels are just entertainment and they are not real. If you read the comments in a lot of these videos, people actually think these are real. It just baffles me. Spotting these channels, whatever niche they may be in, is something you need to train your eye for, not just for sharks, but for other scientific topics. This is really a major thing in science right now, and YouTube doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. Uh, I'm not sure what the answer is. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Should folks looking for a quick buck be allowed to create fake content like this under the guise of educational content? And on top of that, should they be using authentic content like mine to tell a story that's completely fabricated? I mean, what in the world is this? Look at this thumbnail and look at the title. This has 304,000 views. We're at a point where it may be beneficial for YouTube to create a nonfiction tab and a fiction tab because the lines are so far blurred now that um, a lot of people think that everything they see on there is real when in fact it's not. It's only going to get worse with this AI uh, driven content and the way that YouTube is paying these creators. Now, there are definitely red flags to look out for. And when you see them, just tell YouTube not to show that stuff to you anymore. Uh, downvote it. Don't comment on downvote that stuff because it. If your feed is filled with fake shark content, then you're gonna see a lot less of the real content in your feeds. So the bottom line here is, I don't wanna turn this whole episode into a rant, but I do want to inform you about these channels. Keep your awareness high, because there's a lot of that fake content being created. Uh, this episode of Ocean Talks, is a, it's, I realize it's very different from what I normally do. Stay tuned for next month's episode of Ocean Talks. I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Gavin Naylor from the International Shark Attack File. If you have any questions for him, please let me know in the comments below. It's going to be a really cool episode because the Shark Attack File will be releasing their 2024 numbers here soon. And I can't wait to ask him about his methodology and how uh, they get their numbers compiled worldwide on Shark Attacks. As always, thank you for supporting this channel to my Patreons and to my YouTube members. Without your help, I could not do this. If you haven't seen my best of video, please check that out. I'm going to put a link to it in the video description below. That is my favorite video every single year. And if you haven't seen last year's compilation of my favorite clips, make sure and check that out. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more shark content coming your way. Factual shark content coming your way. Thanks for watching.